I'm gonna show you how to beat the classic 4-3-3 in Football Manager. We're gonna dive into the formation's strengths, its weaknesses, and some example tactics that you can use to take it down. So let's get right into it. One of the main strengths that makes a 4-3-3 so difficult to play against is how well it suits a possession-based tactic. Without the players even having to move from their starting positions, this formation creates triangles all across the field. This in turn means that a player will at all times have at least two players close by to pass the ball to, setting up a team to dominate the ball and the match. Secondly, the positioning of the players in this formation creates a great coverage of space all across the field. We've seen in previous videos on the channel how valuable it is to divide the pitch into five horizontal zones and to have players attacking each of these zones. And the 4 3, 3 suits this perfectly as the players in their base position are spread evenly across all the zones, having two players in each zone. But it's not just great in one dimension. If we look at the players positioning vertically, we can see that they again occupy five zones. So the 4 3 3 is set up to battle it out for every part of the pitch. Furthermore, with the strong presence of the three central midfielders and either the wingers or the fullbacks cutting inside more often than not, this formation gravitates toward putting pressure on the often valuable central areas. And if we switch our focus to the defense, the 4 3 3 is a go to formation for any high pressing system. Having a strong central defensive foundation gives the player security to step up out of position and create a pressing trap. This extra player joining the press looks to create two on one situations, recovering the ball quickly and dominating the match again. And if the press does happen to be broken, the 4 3 3 has an amazing rest defense to fall back on. When one of the fullbacks joins the attack, the other fullback usually stays back and tucks inside a bit more. So when the press is broken, they've got a solid defensive line of three defenders, with a defensive midfielder in front of them trying to sweep up any direct balls trying to start a counter attack. But we're going to be trying to break this formation down, so now that we know its strengths, let's look at some weaknesses that we can exploit. We've just seen how the 4 3 3 creates a solid rest defense if one of the fullbacks stays back and tucks in, but that's not always what happens. While trying to break down an opponent with all their triangles, the fullbacks in a 4 3 3 might get a bit overexcited and both join the attack, leaving a lot of space on the wings behind them. But that's not the only way that a 4 3 3 might struggle defending on the wings. If they want to keep their central foundation, it requires requires the wingers to track back and help in the defense, which they don't always do. So they'll either leave your fullback open to move up and put in some crosses, or they'll shift their midfield, opening up space on the other side of the pitch for your team to switch the ball to. But it doesn't always have to be the wide areas where they'll leave space. A tactical trick that 4-3-3 systems like to use is to have the defensive midfielder drop in between the center backs to provide space for the fullbacks to move up a bit when building up their attack. In this situation, the defensive solidity of their central midfield is weakened leaving them open for a central overload. So if you see their defensive midfielder dropping back, switching your attack to focusing on central areas might be the way to go. We also want to set up our own defense as best as we can against the 4 3 3 and there's two things we can focus on. Their singular striker is relatively far removed from the rest of their team, while he's often a crucial part of their goal scoring threat. So while the opponent is busy building up their play, dropping back a bit and making sure to cut off any passing lane to their striker will neutralize most of their danger. And if they can't easily reach their striker, they'll be left to focus on keeping possession and slowly building up an attack. And one of the best ways to counteract such a slow possession based attack is to drop back a bit and become a patient, tight defense. And playing like that actually plays into another one of the 4-3-3's weaknesses. To create enough numbers in their attack, a 4-3-3 demands a lot of up and down movement from either their central midfielders, the fullbacks or both. So while we're sitting back patiently, they're tiring themselves out trying to create their little triangles. And the more tired they'll become, the easier it'll be for us. And you know what might be the easiest thing out there? Tapping that like button. Now that we know the 4 3 3 weaknesses, let's look at three example tactics, each one of them designed to exploit a different aspect of the formation. This first tactic looks at abusing a 4 3 3 where both their fullbacks like to push on. Dropping three players into the defensive midfield position helps cut off passing lanes and isolate their striker, neutralizing a lot of their danger. Having such a defensively minded midfield opens up the possibility of leaving our wingers on attack, letting them occupy the space that the opponent's fullback will leave behind. And with our fullbacks deployed as wingbacks, we'll be sure to test their defense on the wings. When defending, we'll look to funnel the ball to the wide areas to set ourselves up for a wide counter attack. We'll also be sure to really focus on that counter attack and distribute the ball quickly once we got it. And once we're attacking, we're definitely gonna focus our play down the wings, playing a high tempo football and running at the defense to give them no chance to recover. But we've seen that the wings aren't the only place where a 4-3-3 might leave some space, and that's where tactic 2 comes in. 
This tactic is specifically designed for when their opponent's defensive midfielder drops in between their center backs, leaving them open for a central overload. Our central attacking midfielder is positioned perfectly in the space that their defensive midfielder has left behind, while the inside forwards join the central areas to create mayhem. It's a similar counter-attacking setup like the first tactic, but this time we're trapping them to the inside to help set up a central counter-attack. And in possession, we'll double down on our central overload by playing fairly narrow and focusing our play down the middle. We'll also play a short, high-tempo passing style to really split their defense as quickly as possible. But what if you don't want to focus on the counter-attack? Well, that's where tactic 3 comes in. This tactic looks at breaking up their possession play as much as possible. Our wingers combined with our wingbacks will make sure that the opponent's wingers will have to trap back to defense, neutralizing their danger. Having 4 players in attack really helps putting a lot of pressure on the defense, stopping their build-up play before it even gets going. And we're doubling down on this with our out of possession instructions, pressing high and with a lot of intensity. Combining with this, we're also going to be counter pressing once we lose the ball to really give them no time to relax. And finally, we'll be focusing our play down the wings so one of our wingers or wingbacks can put in some crosses for our two danger men up top. But these are just example tactics. The most important thing is that you'll now understand how the 4 3 3 works and that you can build your own tactic to break it down. Check out this video to see how to also destroy a 4 2 3 1. I'll see you on the next video.